Hello GCSE drama students, hope you are well. Um, this is a little bit of a different way of doing things for drama. Obviously we're so used to getting up and being practical um, and working with each other but unfortunately that is not the case at the moment. So I thought what could we do that's actually going to be really really useful and drama theory is a really big part of the course. Um, so I'm going to look at section A of the exam paper. Now, the exam paper isn't taken until the end of year 11, but these are things that we should know anyway in our day-to-day -day lessons and how we look at drama as a subject. So, these um, are things that we should know. Please, please try and make sure that you come back when we go to Fernley again, um, knowing these. Uh, these are the basics, so please make sure you make every attempt to know these. It means we have to cover them again and we can move on to other things. So, um, we're looking at stage space and positions. Some of you will know all these straight away and think, yep, yeah, I know all those stage positions, but maybe the stage spaces. Uh, but really make sure you take it all in and have a little recap if you're not sure. So, having a look. These are the areas of the stage. Now, this is a basic staging. Um, these are universal terms, so every single stage you go on will have these um, stage areas um, and they will be used when discussing directions on the stage. So, if you look in the centre first of all, that is centre stage. So, centre stage is very much what it says on the tin. It is a space in the very, very centre of the stage. Um, if you look to the right and left of that, as you'll see as you're looking at the screen, it looks like it's the wrong way round. Now, it's always the actors right and left. So it's not the audiences, it's always the actors right and left. And whenever you're asked a question on this, um, in the exam paper, it always gives you the position of the audience. That is really key, because the position of the audience makes you aware of where the actors would be on stage. So make sure that you're always looking at that. So as you look at your screen, your left is your right and your right is your left. So get used to kind of seeing that the opposite way around. So you've got um, centre right and centre left. Now. Um, at the top of the stage, at the back of the stage, furthest away from the audience, you've got upstage. Now, the reason this is called upstage is because years and years ago, stages used to be raked, some stages still are. And you'd have to walk physically up the stage to get to the back of the stage. So the back of the stage is called upstage, um, and that means you have to walk down the stage to get to the front of the stage. So that's downstage is the front of the stage. So you've got upstage at the back, downstage at the bottom, and centre stage. Now, in the exam paper in section A, it is multiple choice and you will normally get asked a question on where something is positioned on the stage. So we are going to have a little test on this in a bit. So really make sure you take this in. This will be a good one to take a note of. If you've got a notebook and um, you can start to make notes on things for drama, this would be a really good thing to have a note of. Okay, this is just a basic cut out of a proscenium arch stage. Um, it may be you're asked to label something in an exam paper. And I'll just go over a couple of key bits now. So this is a proscenium arch stage. As you can see on the top right hand of your picture, it says proscenium. Now the proscenium arch is an arch that goes over all of the stage. So it crosses over the entire width of the stage. And it almost frames the stage like you're looking into a picture, looking into a different um, space. You've got a bit that kind of protrudes out um, of the stage area, and that is called the apron of the stage. Um, that is an extra little area where actors can come out. Sometimes that's where asides are done, little um, conversations with the audience, um, breaking down that fourth wall. You've got areas marked for um, offstage, upstage. You've got a back cloth. Um, where settings and scenery can be um, displayed, a cut cloth where you can have sections of scenery. Also, you've got what we call flats. Now, flats are um, wooden um, cut out of certain places um, or furniture, and these give a setting to a scene as well. So that is called a flat. We have got some in at JFC that we pay in Miss Rao, very kindly paints for shows for us. So our flats there. Okay, a little bit of a test now. Um, so question one, with reference to the stage diagram below, this, this is exactly how you get in the exam, by the way. So in the section A of the exam, this is how the questions will be set up. With reference to the stage diagram below, what is the position that the sofa is in? So is it A, upstage left, B, centre stage, or C, upstage right? Make a note of that and we'll come back to it. Okay, question two. With reference to the stage diagram below, what position is the rug in? Is it A, upstage left? B, centre stage, or C, upstage right? Okay, so we'll go back through those answers. So question one, where is the sofa? The answer is A, upstage left. 
Remember we said right and left to switch as you're looking at the screen because it's the actors right and left. Don't get thrown that there's audience on three sides of the stage. Okay, you're looking at where there isn't audience and using the, the place in front of you um, as an actor. Okay, question two, the rug is centre stage. Okay, that's fairly obvious that one, but the rug is centre stage. They're the kinds of questions you get asked. So nothing that is incredibly difficult, but there's some really easy marks to put up there. So make life easy for yourself. Really make sure you know this and go through it. And um, so it's just in your head, and then you can pick up a couple of easy marks on the exam paper. Okay, so looking now at stage types. Now, we can perform in many different stage types in drama. One of the most commonly used stage types is a proscenium stage. We saw that on that picture we looked at a second ago. A proscenium arch stage or an end on staging. If a stage doesn't have the arch over the top of it, it isn't classed as a proscenium arch stage. It's classed as end on staging. Um, this can be called pros arch, so P R O S and then arch A R C H for short, and you'll see that shorthand in quite a lot of things that you look at. This is a really commonly used stage in theatres up and down the country. Um, it gives you the opportunity to look into the stage um, almost at the imaginary fourth wall, and we'll come on to that a little bit in the next um, lesson. You've also got, oh, proscenium arch stage, just to remind you, is in your fact book, but just to remind you, this is a stage with the audience on one side. So, so an end on stage, you know, a proscenium arch stage, is an audience with one side of the stage. The stages we have um, in the drama studio is end on, um, and the one in the auditorium is a pros arch stage, or you could argue an end on stage. Um, the second picture there on the top right is an in the round stage. That is theatre in the round. Now, theatre in the round is a stage that is defined as having audience on all four sides of the stage. Now, it doesn't have to be a circle. Even if it's called theatre in the round, it could be a square stage, a rectangular stage, um, or a triangle. Um, as long as it's got audience on all four sides of the stage, that is a theatre in the round stage. Um, you see this in small theatres up and down the country, and a lot of spaces like the Curve Theatre in Leicester, they can adapt their studio space into being an in the round staging. Um, it also is very common in arena theatre. So if you have places like Wembley Stadium, that is an arena. Obviously, it's a sports arena, but it can be used as an in-the-round stage as well. Uh, the one on your bottom left there is a traverse stage. A traverse stage is defined as a stage with an audience on two sides. Um, this is really common um, and really well used in catwalk shows and fashion shows um, and has various pros and cons um, around that. Um, the one on your bottom Right there is a thrust stage. Now, the thrust stage is defined as an audience with um, a stage, sorry, with audience on three sides of it. There are many pros and cons to this stage, um, and also this is quite a common one that is used up and down the country. Now, a thrust stage, don't get that mixed up with a, um, a stage with an apron on. As you can see on the top left there, that is a proscenium arch stage with an apron on. That curved bit is your apron of the stage. Um, a thrust stage really thrusts out into the audience and it has audience round those three sides. So just don't get those two confused. Okay. Um, the last stage we're going to look at is a promenade stage. This is a very um, interesting type of staging. Um, quite a lot of A-level students choose to use this. Some GCSE students choose to use this. This can be used in site-specific drama um, or drama where you really want the audience to move around. Basically, the audience moves around with the action. So if you're doing an Arto performance, um, you might have the audience move around with the action that's going on. And it really gives people a really immersive experience to the theatre that you are producing. So that is promenade theatre. Okay. What I'd like you to have a look at um, before next lesson, I know you've got some things in your fact book, but not loads. Um, so before next lesson, obviously you've got a week. Um, I don't want you to go and really Google anything. I just want you to sit and have a look at these types of stage in the four below. And I want you to list the pros and cons. So anything that you think is a really good thing about, a benefit about that type of staging, and anything that you can see would be a negative, a disadvantage about that type of staging. And we'll look at the next lesson um, so you can really have a look at that. Um, what I want is for you to have a look and see what you could see as an issue. If, you, if you're really struggling and you can't think of anything, have a chat with a friend um, and see what they come up with and bounce ideas off each other. I'm absolutely fine with you doing that. Um, that is it for lesson one today. 
really hope you're all okay and um, please make sure you stay safe and take care of yourself if you need anything at all um you can always drop me an email on the school email srichards at johnfernie.org um or if you um want to get in contact with um the instagram page you can as well and um, that's jfc performing arts all right take care bye